Welcome back everybody. We're doing the continuation of the Honda Accord now. We're going to be doing the front brakes. I've already done the passenger side just so I know what size everything was. So to do this job you're going to need a 14, a 17, Phillips head, maybe an impact driver, and then uh, probably a C-clamp or brake pedal compressor something like that. And I'm using this right here to hang them up with these are brake caliper hangers but let's get started on this so to take the actual caliper off it is a 14 tighter than I expected. And so we're gonna hang these up just so it doesn't pull on the actual uh, brake hose. As you can see they were getting pretty thin. Now we're going to take the actual bracket off. It is held on with a 17. And yes you can take these off without. You can take the bracket off with the caliper if you would like. I just like to take them off a little separately. Yeah. Like I said, I like to take these off separately just so I can check everything, make sure everything is good to go on that. And next, I'm going to use my impact driver because this one is rusty and the other one was on there pretty tight. up a little bit with some scotch bright spray it off right. here's the part number for the rotors right there 921548 RGS these did come from O'Reilly's they're not a sponsor or anything but this is what we're going with and we're going to spray the rotors off right here as you can see they got some stuff on them so we're going to spray them off with some brake cleaner let me grab a couple rags or towels i am going to reuse the screw i know it is pretty rusted up but is better than nothing. Now make sure that your sliders are nice and free. You can see these are. Also going to wipe down the brackets with some brake cleaner. So we got new hardware in here to come with the pads. We're going to go ahead and put some Loctite on the bolts. Make sure you clean them off first. And just put just a little bit of Loctite on the threads of the bolts. Tighten 
these down. These are the pads that we're going with right here. They are import directs. And you can see it's got the backing strip and the break in compound. Hold on, I'll show you the part number. Where is it? There's the part number 103-1654. put a little bit of brake lube on the backs of them or and then we're going to put a little bit on the part that slides against the hardware just so they don't squeal or anything This is what I'm using right here, Permatex Brake Parts Lubricant. And the squiller was on the back of the rotor. So we're going to put the squiller or indicator, brake indicator, whichever one you want to call it, on the back of it. Next, we're going to compress the piston. I'm just going to use an old brake pad and a C clamp. Like I said before, you can use a brake pedal or a brake caliper depressing tool. It's up to you. Um, unless they're screwing pistons, I find a C clamp actually works pretty good. Just don't go too fast while compressing these. I don't know how well y'all can see that. Like I said, just go real slow. Don't try to force it in. Just if it feels like it's getting hung up, stop and take a look at it because the piston could be crooked. It could be scored or something like that, you know. Some brake lube on contact points and a little bit on the boot. just to keep that boot lubricated. Get one more final spray. Get any dirt, debris off of it. Make sure your backing isn't touching or any of that stuff. All right, I'm going to throw the tire on it, torque it down, and then we'll take it for a test drive. All right, now we're inside the car, and we're going to take it for a test drive. But first things first, I do have it crank up. And what you want to do is press the brake until they get hard. All right, there we go. Because if you don't do that, whenever you go to put it reverse, you may, like, take off and you could hit something, and we don't want that but especially being a customer's car. And another reason we want to take it for a test drive is because we want to make sure that it is shifting right because we did do a transmission flush and I want to make sure that the fluid is correct. one time and then I'm going to take it out on the road and get it up to speed. And we're going to slow down real easy. Kind of 
seat in those brakes a little bit. But yeah, what we did was pretty much did full tune up. Oh, well, not really a full tune up, but we did spark plugs, oil change, valve cover gasket. I adjusted the valves, and only two of them were actually out, but we adjusted them, checked all of them just to be sure. Then we did a transmission fluid swap. We really didn't like do a full flush, but we just did a drain and refill. And the fluid to come out of it was actually really clean. Uh, the magnet on it didn't have hardly anything on it. There was very little on that magnet. So, and it took about four quarts. And as I said before, do not mix any fluids with the original Honda fluid. It uses, I think, HCF-2. And you want to put that back in there. I know it's expensive, but that is the best stuff for this. Even if you get the Valvoline, I think it is, CT CVT um, fluid, it still will not do as good as it should. Now, if you did like a full drain and put all new Valvoline back in it, uh, you could probably do that, but I still would try to do the uh, Honda fluid if possible. We're at the stop sign. get it up to some speed and make sure that everything is shifting good. Oh yeah, she seems to be driving just fine. And it only has like 96,000, 97,000 miles on it. And we kind of did like a full 100,000 mile or yeah, 100,000 mile service on it oddly enough it didn't say to rotate the tires but I went ahead and did that anyway just because uh, me personally I like to rotate tires every time I change oil uh, which is every five to ten thousand miles now stopping really good checked all the lights and everything I didn't see any lights burnt out or anything seems to be doing good on this I'm bouncing y'all around sorry about that but we're about to pull back up into my driveway up where they can pick up the car. Alright, well, test drive went good and all that stuff. We're, we're happy with the way it performed and I, well, I am anyway. So, if y'all want any specs or anything, let me know in the comment section. And if you have any comments or concerns, you know, leave them down there as well. And this is going to conclude this video. And until next time, 
hit that like subscribe notification bell and y'all have a great day